What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to continue on with the second episode of our Filament PHP video series where we're going to customize Filament PHP its theme. Currently, the Filament PHP dashboard appears empty, but this is intentional and completely fine, as it allows for easy customization to suit your preferences. You can adjust the primary color, fonts, change the logo in the top left corner, modify the favicon, and even disable dark modes for the entire admin panel. Let's start off with the most notable one, which is the colors of the admin panel. These needs to be changed inside the filament service provider. Luckily, we got it open. So if you look inside our panel, you will see that it has a method named colors chained to it. Right here, we need to define the color of the entire admin panel. Now by default, filament PHP ships with six predefined colors. And at the moment, they have to find one, which has been set equal to the color Amber. The Amber color is coming from Filament PHP, its color class, as you can see right here. So let's click true on it, where you will find tons of color constants, which are the color options that Tailwind CSS has to offer. Now the values right here are all key value pairs, where the key is the color tint and the value is the base color. These tints are created by adjusting the lightness and saturation of the base color, with 50 being the lightest, as you could see right here, where the last one is 950, which is the darkest. Now let's take teal as an example. If the base color is teal, you can use BG-teal-50 for a very light slate, and BG-slate-950 for a very dark teal. This allows you to easily create a consistent color palette with a range of shadows and tints. So let's close off the colors class. Now let's focus on our primary color. Let's replace the amber color that we have with let's say blue. If we then navigate to the browser and refresh it, you will see that the primary color of our admin panel, so basically the dashboard color and the icon has been changed to blue. Obviously, in most cases, you want to use a different color than the colors that Tailwind CSS has to offer. Filament PHP allows you to generate your own palette based on a singular hex or RGB value. If we navigate back to PHP Storm, you can see that we could basically remove the color class that they have predefined for us. Let's replace it with a string, where we could pass in a string of a hex value. So let's say hashtag 674cc4. Once we navigate back to the browser and refresh it, you will see that the primary color turned into a purple color. We could also pass in an RGB value as a string, so let's get rid of our hex code. And let's pass in the RGB method, or we need to pass in 103,76,196. Once we navigate back to the browser and refresh it, you'll see that the color has not been changed. Since we're already inside Filament PHP at Service Provider, let's actually have a look at how we can easily change the font family of our admin panel. If we open the resources directory, the views directory, you will see that Filament PHP has not added any views right here. The reason Filament PHP does not add it is because it uses the vendor directories to store its views. This is a common practice in PHP packages and libraries where views, assets, and other resources are bundled together in the vendor directory for easy distribution and installation. Now you can't make any changes inside the vendor directory because once you run the composer update command, all your changes will be gone. And we could also not add a link tag of a new Google font inside the head tag of our HTML document to change the font because we only have the welcome.blade.php file. Luckily, we could chain a method to our panel object, so let's say right below the color, of, you probably guessed it, font. In case you want to change the font, I recommend downloading it from Google Fonts, store it inside a newly created directory named fonts in either the public or resources directory, and use it right here. Quick note, by default, Filament PHP uses the inter font. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, you will see that the font is still the same. And let me actually zoom in a little bit. If we navigate back to PHP Storm and replace Inter with, let's say, Poppins, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, and right here, you will see that the font has been changed. And honestly, I'm kind of a fan of this Poppins font, so let's keep it as it is. 
Now, when creating an admin panel, you most likely want to replace a logo with your own as quickly as possible. You might be wondering how you could do that, since I just mentioned that Filament PHP has a view stored inside the vendor directory. Now, one advantage of using the vendor directory is the fact that you can easily overwrite certain files. So let's see how this works. If we navigate back to PHP Storm, open the vendor directory for a moment, scroll down and search for the filament directory inside of it, open it. Now let's open the filament directory inside of it. And in here, you will find a couple directories which should sound familiar to you. And one of them is the resources directory where you will, you guessed it, store resources such as views, JavaScript files, styling, and many more. Now let's open the views directory for a moment, composer directory, and scroll down again, where right at the bottom, you will find a logo.blades.php file. What we need to do right here is recreating this path inside our own resources directory, where we could overwrite the particular logo.blades.php file. So let's do that. Let's scroll up. Inside our views directory, we're going to create a new directory, let's say vendor. And if you add a forward slash right here, it will basically create a subdirectory for you. So let's say filament dash panels forward slash components. Now in here, we're going to create a new file with the name of logo.blade.php. So whatever we add right here, will overwrite the logo.blade.php file inside the vendor directory. It's not required to add an image right here, which you obviously want, but you could even add a string right here. So let's say Hostinger. If we navigate to the browser, refresh it, you will see that Hostinger has been printed out. Now let's navigate back for a moment and let's create an image tag right here. We do need to define the source, just give me a moment. Let's define the alt tag where we're gonna say logo Hostinger. Now let's close off the image tag. Now there are two things that you could do right here for the source. You could just pass in a URL, which I have done right now, and I will add it in the description down below. Navigate to the browser, refresh it. You'll see that it has added hosting or its logo, or we could navigate back to PHP Storm, or what we could do is basically creating a new directory inside the public directory. Let's name it images. What we could do then is basically adding the image inside of it. So pause the video, do that. I will do that too. And I'll see you back once that's done. If your image is located inside a public directory, we could get rid of our URL, use curly brackets, call the asset method and pass in the path from the public directory. So let's say images forward slash hostinger dash logo dot PNG. If we navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you will see that we have added a logo of Hostinger in the top right corner. Now there's the one thing that I want to change and that's the size. And since we are using Tailwind CSS, we can simply pass in a class right here of let's say height 16. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it, you will see that we have changed the size of our logo. We could also change the puff icon, which we need to do through the service provider again. So, let me open my admin panel provider and let's say right under my font method, I'm going to chain a new method called favicon. Then we need to add the image path to it. Now, once again, I will store the favicon inside the images directory. I will also add a link to the description for the image so you could download it as well. For now, I'm going to add a path of images forward slash favicon.png. If we navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you will see in the top left corner right next to dashboard dash Laravel, the title of our page, we have added our favicon icon. Now the final configuration that I would like to show you is disabling dark mode. I'm personally a huge fan of dark mode, so I would never disable it myself, but I do think that it would be nice to show you how that's done. Right inside of our filament PHP service provider, we need to chain the dark mode method to our panel object again where we need to pass in a boolean. By default, dark mode has been enabled, so there's no point of passing in true right here, since it is the default value. But what we could do is basically passing in the value of false, which should turn it off. So let's navigate back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh it. Toggle our icon in the top right corner. 
where you will see that we can't enable dark mode anymore. Now, like I said, I love dark mode, so I'm gonna enable it again by removing the dark mode method. For now, I want to wrap up this video where we talked about changing the primary color, the logo, the favicon of our admin panel, and we have disabled dark mode. Now this was it for today's video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.